From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. Hello, Roger. Hi, Peter. You know, Peter, we talked some time ago about words that Germans use, which they think are English, which are not really. Yeah, like the word handy, which exactly. is supposed to mean cell phone, but it doesn't. <laughs> right. Well, there's a little story I heard yeah. about that very word. A German businessman arrived in London and at the airport noticed that his mobile phone was missing, mm -hmm. and he went rushing around, waving his arms, saying, I lost my handy, I lost my handy. <laughs> and so what happened? <laughs> Well, they had to send for security. They thought he was crazy. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Is there any information or any word out whether he ever got out of that airport? <laughs> well, I'm sure when they discovered what he really wanted, that it was something to do with a mobile phone, uh -huh. then they were willing to help him. And let him go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but speaking of words that lead to misunderstandings, it's not only words. No. Um, there are other things in the English language that can lead to serious comprehension problems. Right. Do you have so, an example for that? Well, um, I have a story for you. Uh, the other day I was teaching and a student asked me whether there was a difference between saying, I try, and I give it a try. Yes. Okay, so I said, well, basically, no, there's no difference. For one, they both mean the same thing, and they're both grammatically wrong most yes. of the time. <laughs> Which I suppose puzzled him. Yes, he thought he was, you know, he was asking about the words. Yes. But actually, he was, uh, he was making a mistake because, as you know, well, anything you try lies in the future by yes. definition yes. when you say it. So you're referring to the future, and in that case, you have to use some kind of a future tense. So I will try, I'm going to try, yes. I'm going to give it a try, I will have a try, but not I try. So you have to use some kind of future tense. Yeah, but part of the problem may be that English doesn't have a future tense. Okay, got me there. <laughs> Not really. In, no. in a way it does, but, uh, but maybe you ought to explain what you mean by that. It doesn't have a future tense, because it's in the books, you know. Yes, well, a future tense would mean there's a little ending to go on the verb to yeah. show this is about the future. As in French, for example, je right. sais, yeah. vrai, I will try. Yes, I think all the Romance languages have a genuine yeah. future yeah. tense. Yeah, that's true. We don't in English or in German. Mm-hmm. Germans do what? They, they add an auxiliary verb, just like the English do, so ich werde versuchen. But don't Germans normally do something else? Yeah, well, they actually don't use it. <laughs> they use, well, I, I'd say they use present tense for almost anything. <laughs> right, which is probably why that student right. did what he did. Yeah, yeah. He would say, ich versuch. Yeah. Ich versuch's mal, würde der sagen. He would say, I try once. <laughs> I have an example of a yeah. similar kind. Uh-huh. Someone said, we see us on Thursday. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and that message did not come across well. First of all, the listener yeah. asked himself, us, 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 what's this? Is it a TV program or what is it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, the German was thinking, we'll see each other, mm -hmm. but got the wrong form, the wrong grammar again. Right. He, he was, to you, to you, he was referring to something that's happening or that was that he did regularly exactly right so he could say uh i i watch this tv show every thursday evening exactly and on the other hand he could say i will watch that tv show uh next thursday evening yeah so there's a, there's a difference here right by the way i think there's a lot of ways of saying something or referring to the future in English, isn't there? I think so many ways. We better keep that for another time. Right, but I will use one more or the most common form of the future right now set by saying we will be back, folks, with another podcast on maybe that very same problem. But for now, bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Sarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. 
Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Well, Roger, there's still a lot of things I don't understand about the English language. And you think you will one day? Thank you.